Hello, Stampers. I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my online technique club card for March. I know it's April. Things got a little crazy in March. So we are going to be making a beautiful technique card today with a technique that I call outside the box. I love this technique. It's easy and I think it has a lot of charm. So I am going to be using the soon to be retiring Oceanfront stamp set. I am going to be combining that with the sentiment set something fancy and I am pulling in those wanted to say dies that are also retiring with our annual catalog on April 30th. So let's turn this camera around and get started. Along with the Oceanfront and the Something Fancy stamp set, I am also going to be using the Black and White Gingham Ribbon. I've got the Nested Essentials dies here that's going to play a very, very big part in the card that we're making. Two blending brushes, mini glue dots, glue. Uh, let's see, what else am I going to need here? I've got my ink pads, Coastal Cabana. Highland Heather, and our Memento Black Ink Pad. Like I said, we're going to be using the Wanted to Say dies. These are one of my favorite sets of dies because it gives you a, a fine lettered sentiment that you die cut and then like a balloon background sentiment that goes behind it for some great color layering. And I love that look. My cardstock layers for this card are going to be a card base of five and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna fold that. This is Coastal Cabana. And depending on the colors that you use, you can choose anything that works for you. Um, these colors are gonna be pretty. I like them. They're some of my favorites, but you can definitely do this in monotone colors. You can do it bright. You can do it like masculine colors. Um, you can go with more earthy tones or subtles depending on what kind of card you're looking for. So I have a basic white layer that's four by five and a quarter. That's for the inside. I've got basic black that is four, or I'm sorry, three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then a basic white layer that is three and three quarters by five. And we're gonna make a matching envelope with our medium basic white envelope. So, oh, and one other thing, I'm going to be using printer weight paper, and we're going to do some masking first for this technique, and that's where our dies come in. So the first die that I'm going to be using here is, um, I can't remember the name of this shape. Do you know the name of this shape, Molly? Coffin. Coffin. Molly's, Molly's calling it a coffin. It is not a coffin shape, but coffins are kind of this way. Anyways, um, I am going to be using the masking on this particular layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that under my printer weight paper. I'm going to take a little look here and I'm going to try to get this centered. I can see that my, my card stuck under there is about right here and I want my mask to be up just a little bit higher than centered. So I think this looks really good. I'm going to use some temporary tape to keep that in place and I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. I'll be right back. Okay, so here comes our mask. We're not gonna be using this, but we are going to be using this piece now. take this and I'm going to put it right up to the edge of my three and three quarters by five inch layer of basic white cardstock and then just to hold it securely so it doesn't move around I'm centering it I can see my white cardstock under there so I'm going to center this just so it doesn't move around on me I'm going to tape it down I'm going to move it up just a little bit too because I said I wanted it to be a little off, a little higher than center. So I'm just going to tape that onto my piercing mat. I like to use this to stamp on. And now we're going to do some blending. And again, like I said before, you can use any color combination that you want. You could do this all with one color, you could do it with more than two colors. But I am going to use the Coastal Cabana 
and I'm just inking up my um, blending brush and I'm gonna start off my actual cardstock layer so that I can keep that blending very smooth and not be blotchy like it is here. Now this card is for my online technique club and what is that you might ask? Well, that's a club of stampers that have chosen to join and each month I create a card using a technique and my technique club members not only get the completed card which I'll show you when we're done here but they also get an instruction sheet showing you showing how to make the actual technique that was used on the card and it's really great whoops see how that moved we don't want that to happen it's really great to see um, all those techniques you can put them in a binder and when you get ready to stamp Maybe you're looking for something particular. You can go through them and go, oh, I think I'm going to do this technique today. Because after you're in the club for a while, you will collect many of these technique instruction cards. And of course, the nice part is, is you not only have the technique on there, but brief instructions telling you how to do it. And also a date for the video that you can find on my blog, which is at www.estampabove.com. You can go look for um, blog posts from that date and it will you'll be able to watch a video so it's very handy and here comes I'm gonna pull this off of here here comes our layer and look how pretty that is isn't that just so soft and pretty so now to do the um, technique which I'm calling outside the box we're gonna bring in some stamping I'm going to bring in my Memento ink pad, and I've got my stamps mounted here, again, from the Oceanfront and the Something Fancy stamp set. I am going to bring in these larger um, cattails, and I'm going to stamp that right over here. And the cool part about this is, is that your stamping is not kept within the boundaries of your mask. And that's where that outside the box comes from because you're gonna stamp the images so that they actually go outside of your masked edge. And I just thought this was such a cool look. Here comes some more. <clears throat> and that's, that's it for this. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to bring in those wanted to say dies and we're gonna make a happy birthday sentiment on the front. Let me see if I can find my dies. Where did they go? Right here. So in the um, wanted to say dies, now again, this is retiring. These are in supply in the online store. I just checked, but they are only while supplies last. This is one that I love and I highly recommend this set of dies. So you've got the detailed words here with the happy birthday and then the words that are bigger that you can layer this die onto once you've die cut it. I'm going to grab a scrap of basic black paper. Now all I want from this is the happy. So I could actually put that right down here and just die cut out that happy and <clears throat> I would run this through the machine. I've already done that here. So here comes the happy for the front of our card and that just pops right out of there. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to pop out the rest of those little pieces inside the letters. Isn't that cute? I love this. Now this was the detailed die. Let me move that. <clears throat> this is the layering die and I already die cut this just on a scrap of crumb cake and you can see how these layer together and of course your color and pattern possibilities are endless but I really love that look these wanted to say dies have feel better soon you're too kind and happy birthday with celebrate so you've got four different sentiments there that have the layering dies along with them so we're not going to use this I'll save that for something else we're just going to use the happy here And now I'm just gonna come in here and do a little dry fit. Now I'm gonna have that happy, oh, I see I've got just a little bit of 
some phrase there. I'm going to um, leave that happy so that it pops right outside the uh, boundaries of my mask that I did again. And I wanted to bring in the happy birthday. I don't want it to say happy, happy birthday. I just want to use the birthday part of this stamp. So I am going to selectively only ink up the birthday. Now, if you have a sentiment you'd like to use that is a little closer together, you can take a piece of tape and cover up the word you don't want, ink it up, and then remove the tape. That's another little masking technique that works really good and gives you so many options for your sentiments. But I'm kind of using this as a guide as to where I want to put my birthday. And I think I'll go right there. And so now I'm going to bring this die in. And it's going to be slipping outside of my box. So outside the box, we're going to put that happy right there. I could have put some adhesive sheet on the back of this to make it um, a sticker. But of course, didn't think of that. And these letters are really uh, big enough that you can add some glue to them. But if they were a little bit thinner, I think I would have definitely wanted those adhesive sheets to turn my letters into a sticker. Got a tiny little amount of glue on these letters. You don't want your glue to come oozing out from behind your sentiment. And I'm going to pop that right down here. Oops, I got it a little bit crooked. There we go. Okay. Give that a little bit of time to set up. Now we're gonna mount this on our black layer. And our black layer gives us just a real thin little border that really makes this white layer pop. And I love doing a dark color behind like this with just a tiny, tiny 1 16th inch border. Here comes our card base. Now, before we put our card base on here, we're gonna add some black and white gingham ribbon. And this is why I wanted that masking technique to be a little bit above center here so that I would have room to add my ribbon. And we're gonna put our ribbon on. I like to use regular tape, it's just scotch tape. Tape this right on here. And I'm gonna bring in my bow jig. Now, if you don't have some type of a um, helper to make bows, you may wanna consider this. I get these from a gentleman that makes them, and they're just holes in a piece of wood with some nails. And they make the nicest bows. So if you're a little challenged making bows, this thing is so nice. I sell these for exactly what it costs me to buy them and mail them out. So they're $10. And if you're in the U.S., you can just pop me an email. My email address is right here, kelly at a stamp com, And I would be happy to invoice you through PayPal. Now, sometimes people think they have to have a PayPal account to be able to pay a PayPal invoice, and that is not the case. You can pay a PayPal invoice with any type of credit or debit card. I will pop you an, in an invoice, you pay it, and I mail out your, I call these bow jig. So if you would are interested, let me know. And again, it's just something that I like to provide to my followers because I know that sometimes bows can be very frustrating and challenging, right? So I took my bow with a mini glue dot and added it right to that strip. That leaves my bow in a place where it's not all kind of wonky, right? I don't have to try to adjust it and get it just perfect. It's going to be perfect because I put it on with a glue dot. I like doing that when I'm tying bows on cards versus trying to wrap it around and tie it in a bow on the card. Ugh. That just gives me all kinds of grief, right? Lots of grief. So here is our technique called outside the box. Now I've got one, a couple more things here to do. I need to add my inside greeting. And since the front of this card is happy birthday, I've got the sentiment from the something fancy that says, I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching out the celebration. 
and oftentimes I need birthday cards where I have missed the boat, right? They're a little bit late, so it's perfect. This is making a really good excuse. And then I'm going to take my envelope and I'm just going to add my cattails. Oops, I see I stuck my fingernail in the ink, so let me wipe that off before I ruin things here. Just a little decoration on the front of my envelope. Here's the inside of our card. I'm going to move this out of the way. Oops, bring my card back in here. Ooh, you know what? I wanted to do one more little thing to the inside before I um, add it. I'm going to add this small little decoration down there. That was some little grass, some little swamp grass or whatever you want to call it. And oh, did, you, did you see what I did? <laughs> I just stuck that to my envelope. <laughs> Good thing I have a lot of envelopes, you guys. That one's going to go in the garbage, and I will bring out another one. And yeah, sometimes things like that happen. There's not much to do to, to fix that. But here comes our birthday card using outside the box. And I had a whole bunch of these cards go out in the mail this week for Technique Club members. This is the actual instruction sheet. So I did the exact same technique on here. And it's got some written instructions here. And then it also tells that there is a video at www.estampabump.com on 41024, which is today. So that's this is what my Technique Club members get each month. All you have to do is email me and let me know you'd like to be in my Technique Club. And um, I will add you to the group. You need to place a minimum $25 order with me each month. You're going to use the host code that I have on my blog every month. You have to use the host code. At the end of a six-month period, you're going to get not only these cards in the mail every month for six months, but you're going to get a $30 credit that you can spend on anything you'd like. So $30, same as cash for me. And that is as long as Stampin' Up! continues to have the host code. Things are going to be changing with Stampin' Up! We don't know exactly when. It's a little ways out. So I just want to make everybody aware that once that host code goes away, the $30 credit is going to be changing. But if you would like to get in on my Technique Club, please feel free to pop me an email. I can send you more information about it. I have um, an email that I can send out that has all the details in it. You can make an informed decision. Click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. And you can click right up here. That's going to take you right to my blog where you're going to find a blog post about um, these, this card that I made. It's going to have pictures on there, dimensions, the whole deal. It'll also have a link to my Technique Club. I think I'll put one in the description under this video also if you'd like to check it out. Any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Happy stamping. Bye-bye.